to ask the clerk to call the roll. Trustee Anthony. Present. Trustee Foster. Good evening. Graham Hudick. Good evening. Let the record reflect the clerk Segrist is in attendance. Treasurer Slavens. Good evening. Benjamin. I am here. And Supervisor Williams. Good evening. Present. Okay, we have a uh, up front a dangerous buildings show cause hearings uh, for two parcels, uh, 500 million and 870 lots. Uh, Kristen Kolb, would you like to lead us off? Or let's see, do we have any motions associated with or something to get it, or do we have to open the hearing? Okay. Yeah, so I would make a motion to open the hearing. Support. Those in favor of opening the public hearing, say aye. 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 Right. Hearing's open. Okay, <clears throat> pardon me, my voice is a little scratchy today. Um, so we have before the board tonight two dangerous building show cause hearings. We've had at least one of these before the board that I can recall. And essentially we are at the end of the process on both of these properties, meaning the property owners have been notified of the conditions under uh, township ordinance under which the building official determined the buildings were dangerous. They've had, mul I think both properties have had multiple hearings in front of the, um, the appointed hearing officer. Um, in both cases, the property owner has not complied with the order of the hearing officer. And so under the township ordinance, which mimics the state law, the board has the opportunity as kind of a last pass on this issue to give the property owner the opportunity to show cause why the orders of the hearing officer should not be carried out. And I think in both cases, the orders were to demolish the properties in question. Um, so the board can hear from the property owner. Mr. Kramer's here. Mr. Goulet is here. Um, I understand ordinance officer Hook is going to be coming. Um, you can, you know, counter, ask questions to counter the, the statements given by the property owner or their representative and then make a decision. So under state law, the timelines are as follows. If the board determines that the property should be fixed up, the, they have 60 days to do it, or the township can proceed to demolish the property and bill the property owner. If the board upholds the determination to demolish the property, under state law, the time frame is 21 days. And if the property is not demoed within those 21 days, then the township can do it and build the property, place a lien on the, uh, the property for the cost of the demolition. Now, you can, you know, do anything in between as well. The board has some pretty broad discretion. Any in questions of, on that? Uh, in terms of formal resolutions, I'm not seeing that in our board packet. Uh, no, there was no formal resolution prepared. So, presentation township, response from residents, However you want to do it. If you want to hear from the property owner first, that's fine. Mr. Kramer can probably give a, a pretty thorough background on both of these properties. Um, he's very much involved with these processes. Are there property owners or representatives of property owners that would like to speak this evening? Okay, from both properties? Okay, very good. Um, we have up front, let's, let's go uh, through 500 Marion first if we may, and then we can segue what's included in the 870 lots. So who's representing 500 Marion? Okay, so please, yes, yes, if you would. Uh, tell us uh, your name, address, and... Um... My name is Nathan Stahl. I'm the uh, representative of the attorney for Carrie Santamoro, the, uh, the widow and um, personal representative of the uh, deceased Todd Santamaro, and I'm here on Carrie's behalf tonight. And so what's happening with the property right now is I got involved here about a month ago. Uh, Mrs. Santamaro was dealing with the mortgage company, trying to get things settled regarding her husband's estate, and we were successfully able to do that as of last Friday. And so the wire transfer was sent to the mortgage company today, and all of that is settled, been in contact with the contractor, and... Um, we are ready to move forward with the demolition. He did pull the permit on October 29th, the contractor did, um, but was asked not to do, finish the work and not start the work until the mortgage company had um, given us the go ahead from their perspective, which we were able to get, as I mentioned, on Friday last week. 
and everything was settled uh, yesterday in that regard. So at this time, we would ask for at least the 21 days because um, the contractor believes he can start possibly as early as Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. The straw has already been delivered to the home, so when they do finish the demolition, that'll be put down along with seed. And um, I spoke with him on the way here. Um, he's stuck on the east side on a project. He had hoped to rally his equipment there today, but it did not happen. And But he thinks he can start on Friday. If not, it'll be definitely be early next week. So that's where we are at this point. You can ask me any questions if you have any at this time. The, the plan is, what you're saying, is give you another three weeks and you'll finish it yourself. Correct. Without the assistance of the time. Yes. When you are done, will it be level earth with grass and seed? Correct. It'll be seed with straw on top, yes. You also have a pool on the property. Yes, the pool will be taken out. Correct. So when, when will this all be finished? I don't have a finish date from the contractor as of right now. It probably depends when he starts, but he believes he can have it done in five days from the start date. When did he say he can start? I'm going to try to start Friday. If not, it'll be Monday or Tuesday of next week. Additional questions, comments? Rob, could you please share with us your opinion and feeling? Because I know you. we've all been discussing this property for a very, very long time. The neighbors are fit to be tied, obviously. Um, they all, everybody wants to see it brought to a conclusion. I'm sure no different than the family. Robert Creamer, building official. Uh, we've been working with this for a, for a long time. Uh, the, the house is not repairable. It's, it's been wide open, a lot of neighbor complaints. And they finally got all of the legal paperwork. The reason that we had this hearing is because it got stalled. There is uh, somebody I claimed that they bought it in an auction. And the owner's intent all along was just to tear this down and move on with their life. And it's just been a very difficult process. So in case this demo wasn't going to happen, that's why we had this hearing. So now that it's happening, I feel pretty comfortable. Uh, we issued the permit. Everything is going to be gone from the property. It's going to be seeded, strawed. We used a contractor before through this program. He did the infamous cat house on Carlisle. And it's, uh, so he's familiar with Canton Township's uh, demo process. So I feel pretty comfortable that it, it will be gone. There is an active permit for it. Um, I don't know if, if we need to put any stipulations on it. I guess that would be up to corporate counsel in case it doesn't happen. But I'm pretty sure that's going to happen now. The, the whole stipulation before, why they didn't demo it was because the mortgage company and some person, it, it, it's been a nightmare. It's, it has not been the owner's fault. The owner's been up front with us the whole time, and she's just wanted it down. It's just a, one legal problem after another. The intent to sell the house then right away? or I'm, the, property. the property? She's the owner of the property. That's, that's up to her. Still the 21 days there, even if they don't get it done, we have a backstop of 21 days based on what you said, Kristen. Yeah. It would be appropriate for the board to, you know, indicate that if it's not done within 21 days, then the board has the ability to take action. But I mean, it sounds like they're ready to proceed and hopefully we won't get to that point. So could we do this? Could we maybe have a motion that basically states um, that the, the Board of Trustees is agreeing, uh, Kristen, uh, here's a kind of a motion I'd like to try to cobble together, is the Board of Trustees agrees to allow the property owner to proceed with the demolition directly now that issues have been resolved within, and, but the expectation of the Board is the property will be uh, completed within the next 21 days. Yeah, I mean, the, the it would be the Demolition motion would completed. be to uphold the finding of the hearing officer that the property should be demolished um, and if it's not taken down as indicated by the property owner's representative within 21 days then the township would have the right to go in and complete that work okay. Can you make a motion? well I mean that's my proposed motion you if the hearings done you close the hearing and proceed or we um, have a call for a vote on that, that motion. Jade, is there something you'd like to add, please? 
Yes, just a point of clarification that um, this being the hearing, um, item G3 on the actual agenda this evening, um, the model resolution is to confirm the order of the hearing officer and approve the demolition of both properties that are listed. So okay. there is direction later on in the meeting um, past that, tonight. That puts the bow on it for us. Thank you. Okay. okay, good. So we do not need to have a motion and vote at this moment. Yeah, it sounds like they included that in the um, general calendar item. All right, but I, I think based on the, the, I'm reading people's faces, are we comfortable with heading in that general direction? Yeah. Yes, we are. So yep. if you'd like to stay till we get into item G3, that's, that's fine, but uh, that is the direction that the board is moving. Appreciate that, thank you. Thank you. Anything additional, Rob, on this item? Okay. I have, I have a question. Yeah, so please. For Purposes of item G3, is that going to reduce or change the uh, total for the uh, cost of demolition? Should we lower that budget amendment when we get to G3, or should we just keep it the way it is? And I would recommend keeping it the way that it is. That way the dollars are already allocated and approved, and if it's not used, then we'll, we won't transfer the money. I'll work with finance on that. Nothing additional? Nothing additional, nothing additional. Um, anything additional on this property? Okay. Trustees, any additional comments? Okay. Very good. Let's now uh, move ahead to 870 lots. Uh, we have representative. Uh, please introduce yourself, sir, and tell us what we need to understand and know. Good evening. My name is David Nikanen, uh, uh, Friedlander Nikanen and Rogowski. My address is 1700 West Big Beaver in Troy, Michigan. I do have a written uh, companion to the presentation, which I'd like to at least have submitted for the record, if not uh, distributed. for Kristen. Do you have a copy, Kristen? Here, I'll... Uh, this correspondence covers 870 through 890. I understand only 870 is up this evening, although at various times my client had been advised that the township was moving forward with the demolition of all three properties. Uh, in fact, several potential purchasers of the property who came to the township were told by the township's uh, employees that these properties are being demolished and there's nothing that can be done to stop it. So that's why we've addressed all of the properties um, when they came to ask about um, potential redevelopment of the properties. Um, so let's focus on 870 lots since that's the only item that's up this evening particularly. Um, the issues relating to this property date back to two um, particular events in time. One was the death of our, my client's mother, who was uh, occupying 890 lots, which is a seven unit apartment complex. Um, and since that time, that uh, apartment complex has been vacant. And the other relates to the Lots Road Improvement Project. So the Lots Road Improvement Project was the paving of Lots Road. And that improvement elevated the roadbed anywhere from two to four feet above where it had been. As part of that project, someone, Wayne County Roads, pointed, has pointed the figure at various times at Canton Township. Canton Township has obviously taken the position that the road was designed by the county, so it's the county's obligation, although Canton Township did fund a portion of the project. Someone is, was responsible for installing a storm drain 
that would take that stormwater runoff and drain it away from my client's property. It was shown on the plans. It was never installed. For four years, my client has been trying to chase down the installation of that storm drain. And in fact, there's several documents in here that show that this is not something that we're making up at the last minute. This is shown by the fact that we have a letter from the county confirming that they've had communications from my client since as at the latest 2017. We believe it was earlier, but that's the latest, the earliest correspondence we could find. And I've also attached copies of the actual correspondence of my client to the county saying, please do something about this flooding on my property. At this point to no avail, although now that I've been become involved, we have a Wayne County Corporation Council, uh, Raynard Jones, who is addressing this with his client, the Department of Public Services, and has indicated to me that he's having a very difficult time finding out why this wasn't done and what needs to be done because of the tremendous turnover in Wayne County's engineering division. So my client has been stuck with Wayne County on that side and this Canton Township process on the other side. Now, as to the Canton Township process, she went to an initial meeting um, where she didn't, uh, my client did not understand going in that this was a dangerous buildings hearing. She said you need, she was told you need to come down and talk about the property because she had been in China visiting her daughter for two months and literally got a call when she landed and came to a meeting the next day and discovered during that meeting that this is not a meeting, this is a hearing on a dangerous building. Uh, they held the meeting, she raised the issues of the flooding and then came back on June 4th for another hearing before the dangerous buildings hearing officer, Mr. Robert, um, regarding items that needed to be completed on 870, 880, and 890. Now, setting aside whether those items qualify as a dangerous building or not, the vast majority of those items have been completed. And in fact, attached at the very end of this package is a list of all of the items that have been completed on these three properties. And for 870 Lots Road, since the beginning of this process, my client has installed a new roof on the entire house, new gutters and downspouts on the entire house, new installation installed in two of the bedrooms, bathroom, and part of the utility room, and installed new drywall in the same rooms, and has uh, had a dehumidification system there for four days, costing her over $1,000. Between the three properties that are at issue in this entire process, my client has expended between $25,000 and $30,000 since March of this year to try and satisfy the demands of the township. Now, unfortunately, I only have one copy of this, but um, this is a photo of this dangerous building. The building is secure. The building has no openings. The building has a new roof. The building has windows that are secure. The building has doors that are secure. The only thing the building doesn't do is comply with the maintenance obligations for a certificate of occupancy. Now, my reading of the dangerous buildings hearing, which by the way, does not mention any of the subsections of your ordinance relating to dangerous buildings at any point, is that the hearing officer conflated maintenance with dangerous building. There is nothing about this building as it sits today that qualifies it under your ordinance as a dangerous building. Um, and if we go through each of those items, it's very clear that that's the case. The initial notice that was sent while my client was in China on March 26, 2019, is that a door aisle, passageway, or stairway does not conform to the township fire code or state construction code. They do. The building's secure. The doors are uh, secure. The doors are weather tight. It complies with both of those codes. A portion of the building has been damaged by fire, wind, flood, or any other cause, including physical deterioration, such that it's appreciably less than it was before. There has been some water damage due to Wayne County's flooding, but the stability of the building is as it was previously. This is merely water damage that can be fixed by dehumidification. A part of the building is likely to fall. That claim has never been made. In fact, none of these claims were covered in the dangerous building hearing. A portion of the building has settled. Not true. The building or structure, because of dilapidation, deterioration, decay, faulty construction, or otherwise, is likely to fall. Not true. And was never raised in the dangerous buildings hearing. The building is manifestly unsafe for the purpose for which it is used. 
it is not unsafe for the purpose for which it is used because it's currently vacant. Now, if as I could go through all of them, but I don't want to waste your time. Item 10 is the only even arguable item on this list of 10 subsections of potentially dangerous buildings. And item 10 says an item, a building that remains unoccupied for 180 consecutive days and is not listed as being available for sale, lease, or rent with the real estate broker. Two items about that. Number one, it has been vacant for 180 days or more. But number two, it is listed with Mr. Van Elsley, who is here this evening. And number three, that subsection says this subsection does not apply to either of the following. A building in which the owner notifies the township that it will be vacant. In November of 2016, Ms. Wyatt notified Mr. Hook in writing that this building would be remaining vacant. In fact, the apartment building, which is 890, had every uh, system blown out in 2016. The boiler was shut down and drained. The plumbing was blown out. The electrical was shut down other than the fire safety system. Um, and we have maintained the exterior of the building in accordance with the state construction code. So my trouble here is that the township, uh, if it does not abate this action, will be demolishing a building that is safe, secure, not dangerous, and which the township was notified was going to be vacant. And it, I, I will, I'd be happy to pass this photo along, uh, which was of 870 Lots Road, which shows the condition of the property, even with the flooding issues that have been caused by, we believe, Wayne County. The property is still secure, safe, not wide open to the elements, and is not, does not qualify as a dangerous building under the township's ordinance. It may not be uh, able to receive a certificate of occupancy as it currently exists, but that is a different test than whether a property is a dangerous building. And under the township ordinance, this property is not dangerous. Now, having said all that, the property is listed for sale, and once this flooding issue is resolved, my client has attached a quote which she has obtained for the remedying of the issues on 870 Lots Road, which will cost $26,000 ballpark, ballpark. The property is worth at least $100,000 when repaired, 80 to 100 according to Mr. Van Elsley. So we're talking about a $30,000 investment for an $80,000 property. No one is gonna walk away from that. My client is not gonna walk away from that and the, and the property is not unsafe or dangerous under the township's own ordinances. So with that, I'm happy to pass these photos for review and I'm happy to answer any questions and I'm sure Mr. Creamer has a different view of this than I do and I'm happy to listen to his view. Before we uh, kick it over to Kristen and uh, Rob, do any of the trustees have questions or comments at this point uh, for the attorney? Yeah, go ahead, Dan. So I noticed in some of the letters that you had written back and forth, they were written back and forth between um, the owners and the town and the county that the original plans had a drain was supposed to be installed. Correct. And then in the end, even this year, they're offering to put the drain on their property to drain some of these this water, but that still seems to be lost somewhere, right? Still waiting on Wayne County to determine. Uh, at, at one point, someone from Wayne County Engineering said, yep, you're right, we didn't install it, but yeah, we're out of money. Go talk to another department. We've been caught in a bureaucratic whirlwind with Wayne County, and no one is willing to take responsibility. Now that I have the Wayne County Corporation Council involved, I'm hopeful that someone will soon take responsibility for what needs to be done. I should point out one, one thing which I, I missed in my presentation, which is my client did all of these things on 870 lots, which is the uh, property that's up today. She did everything that could be done with the water situation as it is today. And in fact, our reading of Mr. Creamer's inspection report from June 18th is that he said, don't do anything else until the water issue is resolved. Now, Today I heard from um, Ms. Kolb that uh, it should not be, that, there, that Mr. Creamer's reading of that was only the items that he identified should he stop. But our reading is that it said, don't do any further work unless you fix this flooding issue. So if the township would like us to do that work, I suppose that's okay, but all of that work would be for naught because if the flooding issue still exists, we're putting in drywall that will be flooded again 
um, and we'll be tearing out the drywall and putting it in. It's a, it's a vicious circle that I'm trying to break with Wayne County Corporation Council, but what, what is not reasonable is for this property to be demolished when it is safe and secure and we're trying to work through a bureaucratic nightmare so that we can get it resolved and get it repaired and get it sold. Any additional questions? So I, I would just ask what is the maintenance issue that, and is that something that could be resolved? So the maintenance issues, um, you know, for example, one of the items that Mr. Um, Creamer identified in his inspection report after this dangerous building hearing was that we put six inch address um, numbers on the building. That was one of the maintenance issues. Um, he would like us to rip out rotting uh, cabinetry. There is not rotting cabinetry. There is under the sink in the kitchen, the base of the cabinet because the kitchen sink was dripping is rotted. The cabinetry is in great shape. There's one piece of wood that needs to be replaced. And the resolution for that is to demolish the building. All right, are the, um, any additional comments, questions? Go ahead, Diane. I, I don't have questions now, but I might after. I want to oh, absolutely. Comments. All right, so Kristen or Rob, do you want to lead us off here? I just want to make one comment. The issue of the flooding on the property and the drainage that Wayne County is apparently going to take care of is completely unrelated to the dangerous building's proceedings. It has nothing to do with the condition of the building. Rob's uh, comment in the inspection report about you know, fixing the, the, the drainage had to do with the fact that the grating around the house was improper and it had a roof with no gutters so that when it rained, the rain would just come straight down and it was causing the foundation of the property to erode. Back in March, May, they came in and applied for a building permit, replaced the roof, put the gutters and downspouts on, that issue's been resolved. We are not holding up any work on the property because of the flooding in the yard. They're completely <clears throat> separate issues. That's how they're interpreting it, but that is not how the township has been treating it. They're two separate issues. Um, additionally, the, um, he, Mr. Nykannon had claimed that we were holding up permits, but in fact, in, on, they issued the roof permit, and then on Jul June 11th, we issued a permit for interior finish in the property to replace, or in 870, to replace the drywall and everything inside. Because Mr. Creamer has pictures showing that the place was covered in mold, black mold. But to our knowledge, no work has been done. They've never called for inspections on the interior finish. As far as we know, they haven't done anything. So I'm going to let Mr. Uh, Creamer address some of the um, other issues in, in the specific. Please do. Rob Creamer, building official. Uh, to begin with, when we sent the notice out for dangerous building hearings, all three properties were attached. We did not separate 870 from 880 from 890 and say which numbers that were ticked applied. I've got the complete file back there. I can show you pictures of 880 and 890, but it really doesn't pertain to this case. In 890, the floors are gone. They are falling right through, uh, mold, I mean, but that does not pertain to 870, which is the house that we're dealing with now. I do have pictures that I took when I was at 870, and they're probably not as nice as the councils. This is a picture of the ceiling. That's the mold on the ceiling. So some people think that's dangerous, some people just ignore it and say that it's not dangerous. To me, that's dangerous. It needs to be addressed. Work was started in the property without permits prior to us being there. They got the permit later, but this was an attempt at, to put drywall and to cover some of it. This drawing, this picture here shows where the floor is wet and where the floor is dry, which why anybody would want to do this type of work with a wet floor is it, you're doing it to, it's just going to mold again, and you're going to have to replace it. This is the bathroom. All that was remaining was the tub. 
This is a picture of an attempt, some of the interior walls, uh, they were rotted, the bottom sills were rotted, so they scabbed in some lumber and tried to support the drywall. It was already falling off. I've got, they told me no electrical work was done, but you can clearly see this is new electrical work. This is the current hot water tank. It's one, it's a slab on grade. When were these pictures taken? These pictures were taken at the time that we did the inspection. Which was, I have a timeline here, June, June 11th. Oh no, June, I'm sorry. I have to go through this. <coughs> Week of June 13th, the inspection was completed and the report was emailed to the realtor on June 18th. I've not been in the property since. No one's called for any inspections. Permits pulled to do that work? Pardon me? We're, we're, what about permits? Were there any permits pulled to do that work? They didn't pull any mechanical permits for any of the electrical, plumbing, or furnace work, but there is a general building permit to replace the drywall, to fix any rotted wood sills, but they, as I told them, they would have to take all the rotted drywall off, repair the wood, dry it out, because putting stuff back on wet concrete is not, it's no one's best interest because it's just going to do the same thing that it's doing now. Is the concrete wet because of the downspouts? Or well, at, without the downspouts being there, that's a major contributor. Uh, the whole property is pretty wet. But I think the house is high enough where the water was puddling was more towards 880 than it was at this house. So I think that the lack of the downspouts and proper drainage at the base of the house was a large contributor to the floor being wet, the mold on the ceiling. And you know, things like rotted cabinetry, if, if there's one piece that's rotted, it's still rotted, it has to be replaced. Um, we could sit here and pick, a, pick apart the report, but you can see from the pictures, that house, is, there's really been nothing done to it. Oh, Go ahead, Diane. Yeah, sorry. Diane. Real quick, and during the process, because I have no clue, um, when they replace the drywall before they put it up, do they have to leave it open for you to? Yes, for come an inspection. In, but that at that at time, it. that was done before we even did the inspection. Okay. So that work was done prior to getting a permit. Okay. Okay. Thank you. But they did subsequently came in. Uh, I think the owner came in, and I gave her a permit right on the spot because I wanted to have a permit so they could call for inspections. But you've not. They've no. not called. You. There's been no inspections called for. Okay, thank you. I just wondered the water that you're showing in some of these pictures on the floor, do you think it's coming up through the, or it's coming through the wall? I think the floor is just saturated, and uh, what should have been done is immediately before they did anything is get some scrubbers or dehumidifiers in there to try to dry it off. I think they took care of the largest problem by getting the downspouts, and, and if there's any water leaking through windows or whatever, I don't think it, it contributed to that. It's just mainly groundwater. You don't think that the drainage issue that Kristen was talking about has... only way you can tell is by drying out the floor and seeing if it comes back. But it's, I mean, apparently they're trying to do that now, is what I heard, but I didn't see any attempt to that earlier. When does the permit expire? Because I know they're only... As long as you're doing work on the permit, the permit doesn't expire. And we don't go after people for expired permits. As long as they're trying to get the work done, we work with them. And the, the state law says is, as long as you're doing work on that permit and moving forward, that the permit is, is OK. But if there's no activity for six months, it can expire. But we would have to revoke it at that point. But we don't usually do that. We let people finish their work. Would all of these items that you have photographs of have to be fixed before you would agree that the property was in good condition and not to be condemned? There's no facilities in it right now. There's just, there's no bathroom. You saw the extent of the bathroom, it's a bathtub. The hot water tank's rusted two feet up. Uh, there's mold on the ceiling and all I can go by is what I saw. I'm saying if, if those items that were in the pictures had been fixed, would that satisfy your inspection? Uh, those pictures are of a condition. Uh, there's a letter, if they fixed the items I had in the letter. 
if, yeah. that would satisfy it. You don't know if they've been and, fixed or not. Uh, they've sworn here that it's not done. You haven't inspected. No, they haven't called for an inspection. There since June. That's right, and they uh, would be required to show us an open stud inspection, as we've already. <clears throat> So I'm assuming that none of that was done. And the insulation he was regarding to was all done without inspection and covered. I'm making a whole lot of assumptions in my head that I'm trying not to make. The, um, does the property owner live in the community or close to Canton Township? Not that it doesn't matter where you live, but I just, you live in Detroit, okay. So you inherited, or the, the properties were inherited. And at some point, you've hired a realtor to, to flip the property for you or get maximized potential value. There's improvements being made, but it's being slow walked. It's not an expedited project. It's not a high priority project. Or it could be a function of funds. It's none of my business, right? Um, we, have, we have a property. You have to. Yeah. I'm sorry. If, and I, I don't, sir, if representation would rather respond on behalf of the property owner, that's fine too. I just, I'm trying to understand the big picture. Yeah. Okay, please. Uh, just I'm trying to understand overall. Okay. When Mr. Creamer was there and pointed out the wet floors on the slab, we walked with Mr. Creamer, Mr. Van Esley and I walked with Mr. Creamer outside at that time, the, the, the ground was still saturated. We walked over, I told him where the drain was supposed to be, and they had not put it in. When that water comes up, it comes up over the third step of the front porch on 880 and covers half of the front yard of 870. The whole driveway is also flooded in 870. I've been trying to get this fixed for years. I dealt with Mr. Surchek here. He told me Canton Township doesn't own the roads. You have to go to Wayne County. I'm dealing with the people at Wayne County. Nobody's doing anything. Then the guy that I was dealing with retired without anybody saying anything. Then finally Mr. Murky steps in and starts assisting me so I can find somebody who's actually live there. I'm dealing with Wayne County Drain Commission. Mr. Kramer said, you need to bring people in to scrub the air and dry it out. I hired a company to come in and do that. It was $1,000. They came in, the cement floors were pristine white. They said, if you have this flooding, this is going to get wet again. And now the floors are not pristine white anymore because when we have rain, we haven't even had the worst part yet, it'll be the spring, the fall rains and the spring thaw. We will have three or four feet of water in those yards. When I hired the company to come in and do the drywall, they demolished all that, the, the plasterboard that was bad, my intention, if you read the hearing, was that we were going to rip out all the paneling that was there and replace or repair the drywall. When we ripped out the paneling, the company that I hired, they called me and sent me pictures on the, their phone saying, look, your drywall is all chopped up all over the place. We can't repair it. It all has to be replaced. So I told the gentleman the, Mr. Amaterio, I said, if you open the walls, Mr. Creamer told me, we also have to replace all of the insulation. They ripped everything out all the way back to the studs. They called me and said, you have new wiring here, and that's why you, we think that's what the tenant did, is that they rewired it, and that's why they chopped the holes in the wall and put paneling up. So I said, okay. I immediately came down, and by the time I got out to Canton from where I live, they had put the insulation in, they, but they took pictures of all the insulation, what they had done, and they put the drywall up. I came in that day and sat here for three hours waiting to see Mr. Kramer and because I said, you, you shouldn't have put that drywall in. They said, well, all the other communities we work in, we just have to take pictures showing the new insulation. So I came in. I told Mr. Kramer what had happened. I said, they've already done this, so I know I've got to get a building permit because they did more than repair it. I pulled the permit that day. Then when we're going through, he, he said, you can't put drywall in because as long as the floors are wet, it's going to absorb the water. The drywallers have told me the same thing. So I have all the drywall purchased. It's sitting in apartment number one. I have all the insulation purchased. It's also sitting there. 
my intention is to rip out the kitchen. We already did rip out the bathroom because he wanted me to have everything that removed was damaged. That's all been ripped out. But I'm waiting because they said you can't put anything in that's going to, that the water is going to affect. And until they put that drain in, that slab is going to absorb water. Now, that new roof and those downspouts and, and gutters were put on before they came in June. That work was done in May. And the old house had gutters and downspouts on it that took the water away from the house. There were never any missing downspouts or missing gutters on that house anyway. So the water all has to do with, with, Can with this Wayne Canton road thing. And when this all started, I walked that property with the architects. You'll see that I dealt with them originally. And they, I said, you're raising this road, and you're, we had ditches here, and there's now not going to be any ditches. What's going to happen to all this water? He said, it'll be better. You won't have any water problems. There won't be anything at all because we're putting in these storm drains. They actually walked me to where the storm drain was going to put in on my property. They had me sign documents with the easement for the property, which I did. Then no storm drain. Then they told me, well, we did. I'm sure we put the storm drain in. It probably just got covered by accident. So go out there and rake the stuff, and you'll find it. So we're raking. We raked it, everything. We hired somebody with a metal detector to come in. No drain. Finally, I came in. I talked to Mr. Murky again. He went out there, looked in the manhole, and said, I don't think they ever put it in because I don't see anything leading from that manhole back into your property. So I've done what they asked me to do. I ripped all the stuff out. Yes, I haven't put anything else in. But item number one, um, the item that he sent me said, stop all restoration until the water issue is resolved. So I, I stopped everything that was going to af be affected by the floor, the drywall, the new cupboards, you know, all of that stuff, the new, the new d the hot water heater, all of that stuff has been stopped. Yes, there's no plumbing. We ripped it all out. They asked us to rip it all out. We ripped it all out. I'm, I'm good. You, you've done a very good job of helping us understand the bigger picture. That's all I was looking for. Yeah, and so. You had any conversations with engineering? I talked with them, and they said it's clearly a Wayne County issue, but Bill remembers the property always being wet and having water issues. But if we, when, when you, when she dried it out, when she brought the scrubbers in, if they walked and she said how the floor is pristine and white, if they just walked away and took that out, it's going to come right back because there's no heat in the house. If there's no heat in the house and there's no dehumidifier with all the humidity in the area, you're locking up a house. It's just going to come back work in progress and I completely get if if the lack of the drain is contributing to the, the, the property being vet, uh, wet wetter than is acceptable and you know they've told me how high the water gets I I go by there all the time because I take my daughter through that street to dance and I've never I've never seen it that high to get an inch of rain the next two days so I will be driving <laughs> on the property and I will look myself I'll, Okay, outside legal counsel from Wayne County, because now you think you went down a rabbit hole with, with the engineers. You ain't seen nothing yet until you're done with the legal counsel from Wayne County. And I, I feel for you. Who was the last engineer you spoke to at Wayne County? Do you remember the gentleman's name? Here, it's one of the letters. <clears throat> It all falls under Bev Watts. What they told me was yeah. at the end of all this process, when it was Mr. Markey that said to me, you're still dealing with the
<laughs> again, again, you're, you're good there. Rob, is there anything, because I'm forming a very strong opinion, but Rob, is there anything else you want to share? Yes, the, the three properties, yeah. the hearing officer, what he did, his, uh, we, there was two hearings, and uh, they, they agreed to the timeline. That, there was an agreement with the hearing officer and the owner as to a timeline of when these would be fixed up. And the buildings were, the timeline was 870 first, then 880, and then 890, and each of them have a subsequent date of when it has to be done at the latest. And this is the only one that missed the date so far because the other dates are obviously down the road. And we, we brought this in as one property with all three on it. Your intention is for us to make a decision on all three properties at once tonight. No, you can't make a decision. The other ones, the timeline's not up on the other ones. But I haven't seen anything come in for those as far as permits or anything as well. 880, uh, there's somebody living in it. Uh, it's an illegal rental. Uh, we informed her in May of it, and she ended up getting a court appearance ticket about it, and they're, they're dealing with it now. I think they're having an eviction notice to get the person out. Diane? Just a couple questions, because it sounds like there's a drainage issue, um, and it doesn't sound like it's going to be fixed anytime soon. What is that going to do to the foundation of the building? That's a slab on grade. Uh, the other foundations... Uh, she did do some tuck pointing on 890, or is it I'm trying to, on 890? That's the apartments with all the units, but there's a lot of structural damage in those. So when they get into repairing the floors, it's who knows what they're going to find because a lot of the floors have caved in on those units. This building, because we're talking about this one right now. This one right now? Yeah. Um, probably nothing because it's a floating slab. Uh, slab on grade is a floating slab, and the foundations is usually a monolithic pour, and they, they kind of just float there. So if they're wicking water, it's hard to dry them out. And the house is older, so I would imagine there's no vapor barrier underneath the slab, which if there is water that would come right up to the house, it would eventually wick through and cause that wet floor. And is there a way to cure that? They might correct the water situation and still have a moisture problem that they can't control. So I, the only way you can tell is by drying it out, keeping a dehumidifier in it, and seeing what it takes, how long it takes to, to keep that uh, dry, that floor dry. <coughs> Could you it out? Because you said you had taken it down. No, we've had no one's called for inspections. I would have liked to see it. So I would have recommended, okay, if we're going to take this scrubber and dehumidifier out, let's put a little dehumidifier in here so to take that humidity so that if we have a, a warm rain or something, the humidity doesn't come in the house, there's no air change, the house is locked up, so now you're putting the humidity they just took out of the air right back into the house. Is that done? When I don't know because I wasn't, she could maybe answer that. While she's thinking about that, can I? I'm oh, sorry. Is there a reason that we can't go in and inspect it now and see? The, or you're saying it's back to the same state it was before with the wet cement and? Yep. Uh, oh, sorry, ahead, that was loud. <laughs> sorry. Um, it seems that to me that this all comes down to the drainage issue. I mean, maybe not everything was caused by the drainage issue, but that seems to me to be the overriding thing that right now needs to be addressed. And I was wondering if there's any assistance we could provide in terms of talking to the county about this. Okay. Dave and I can help with that. Because, um, I mean, I, it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, I, I know that we have good people that understand how these things work, like Mr. Kramer, but it sounds like until we fix this drainage issue, we're not going to know whether this um, house needs to be condemned or can be repaired. Um, so personally, I'd like to, I don't know how much time that's going to take. I don't know. I, I think we should address it towards 
um, looking at trying to find out how the drainage is going to fix, this could go to court. I don't really even know. You guys could end up suing the county or something. I have no idea, and that could take years. So we need to figure out a plan, assuming we're going to try to fix, get the drainage issue addressed. What about the other two properties? Well, they don't have a similar problem because they're on crawl spaces. So do they move forward to start fixing those? Because we have deadlines on those. And but are they affected by the water? This? Are they affected by the drainage issue as well? Not really. I mean, the, that's the construction is above the crawl space. I mean, they could put a sump pump in the crawl space if there is water in the crawl space and pump it out and still work on the construction above it. They've I mean, been vacant you, for a long time. Yeah. That's why there's mold issues. That's <coughs> why there's rotted wood. Um, I mean, if you have recommendations for those, I would think a good discussion with them about what they should be doing on those. Um, they have timelines that have been set by a hearing officer. But My what was, was what was the timeline in terms of the drainage issue? Was it was there a thought that there was a drainage issue at that time when those were being discussed? So now we know that the county didn't do something and they've even said that they haven't done anything. So I don't know, I'd be willing to give them some more time personally. How, much, how big is the lot? How many acres or is, are there acreage or how big is the property? Three point two acres. In current condition, the property is probably more value without these buildings on it today. That's, that's opinion. I, I don't know for a fact. Joe does know. Property's always been wet, or just been wet since the the road. It's been wet since the road. There was a okay. large drain out there. Yeah. It's a good spot to go. Yeah. There's some areas where the water's puddling that even if the drain was where they said it was, the water's not going to get there. So they need a lot of regrading. They can't just put a drain in and say, problem solved. Because I, Bill and I had talked about it and we saw some, I showed him some pictures and he said, so if we put a drain here, how is this big pool of water going to get to it? So there's grading that has to go along with the drain. And I don't know how far Wayne County did grading when they did the road. But the two have to go hand in hand or the, the water problem won't go away because pooling water is pooling water. You just sealed my, my, where I want to go with this and I'm going to share an opinion and the rest of the group can tell me or not. I would like to have, I'd like to put a pin in this, just stop talking about this project right now today. Give us a few weeks to get the engineering folks talking to each other so Jade and I have a basic understanding of drain, no drain, what can and can't be, grading, what the potential for the property might be. I'd like to understand that before we pull the trigger on these guys. Right. And all the time, till keep thinking about the other two projects that had timelines as well. Because I don't want to bring everybody back again in a couple months for the same thing on another building. Related to wet property and drainage, then I don't want to talk about it until after we all have a better understanding of the drainage and the county. Well, the repairs for those properties can be done. It's this, this property that we're here tonight about is on the ground, and it's probably, if it is a drainage issue, 
that is, would be affected more than the other buildings because the other buildings are on crawl spaces with the floors up higher. Pardon me? That whole area is flooded. That still contributes to some. Not as high as the floors for the other two buildings. I don't think it ever got inside this building either. Here's my, my Maybe got up, you know, encroaching the front yard, but right now the concrete is wicking the water because it's so wet. That's what the claim is. My fundamental issue is I don't have a representative from Wayne County here. I don't have anybody from engineering here. I don't know anything about drains or wet foundations. I am fine postponing this issue if it's not a burden for us having an additional hearing in the future if the drain doesn't actually, we don't know if the drain solves the issue, right? If, if the statement was made that Bill Surchek said that property's been wet for a long time, Bill Surchek knows every single parcel of property in this township. He can tell you who's owned almost every single parcel of property. He knows almost every inch of every parcel of property. He's not here today, but I'm not inclined to say on basically this like kind of notion of like hearsay that Wayne County said that there might be a drain there. If we put the drain there, it's gonna definitely solve this issue. I, I don't know, so I am concerned that I'm, I'm okay with us postponing this, um, provided we can we can come back for a dangerous building hearing. Because my, my fundamental issue is, if there's mold, if the place if if the if the buildings aren't habitable, which is, or if they're a if they're a, a danger to the health, safety, and welfare of the township, which is what we're here today to discuss. Like, are we abdicating that responsibility? That's my concern over the notion that, it, that a drain might fix it if the county puts the drain in, if the county finds money for it, if the county is going to be doing that anytime soon. How long are these buildings going to sit there? How long are they going to be detrimental to the health, safety, and welfare of the entire township? That's my fundamental concern. I want to be fair to the property owners, too, but I also don't want to just leave those buildings sitting out there. Well, the structure itself is not a danger from the externally. It's on the interior. And they take the drywall off today. and re-insulate it. You're gonna know, you'll know the extent of the damage because we have to look at it before they put the insulation, before they put the drywall on. And if anything is like that one picture I showed you, there's going to be a lot more expensive work in there because you can't All just interior. cover that up. Because, All interior. Right. That wood. And you have your outside walls too. And if that wood's wicking up water like the concrete, and it has been for a long time, that's got to be replaced as well. So now you're talking about replacing the complete perimeter of the house. Because if you just cover it up and put insulation in, you're going to get mold again. Coming back without, go ahead. Is the danger of someone living in there, or is the danger of it falling down? It's not going to fall down right now. Out what the danger is then, because if we, nobody can it meets the criteria, it meets cri all we need to do is prove one of those of the list that is on the dangerous building list, and it can go to a dangerous building hearing. If the building's been sitting vacant for a while, there's there's 12 items there. I can share you the copy. Your residential ones, the residential rental, but you have a rental list in here, and I could see some of those. I just didn't know. I mean, if nobody's living there and it's not near anything that we don't think it's going to fall, I mean, do you think giving it a little bit of time while these investigations are happening would cause a danger to anybody? No, but the properties aren't getting any better. And they do have timelines on the other two buildings. So I just want everyone to keep that in mind, that the other two buildings are the clock is ticking for the repair for what the hearing officer gave. So uh, when, would they, when would we see those? based on the timeline today. Okay, go ahead. All right, that, that works really well for me. So our next dangerous hearing is January 20th. That gives us about six weeks, you know, holidays included, no problem to find out just a baseline from Bev Watts and her team where, what their view of the world is on this, this parcel. But that's sectionally, and that's. Yeah. Only, but you're telling the owner right there that you shouldn't have to do anything to that time. I'm but not that's, saying I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, is I need more time to understand the big picture. <coughs> all the pieces and how they fit together, or maybe don't fit together at all. That's what I'm asking for. Yeah. I have a question. Oh. I can. The yes, deadline please. is January 31st. We have to give 30 days of notice of a of the show cause hearing. So. That next property wouldn't be in front of the board until probably early March. 
David. Um, does, um, does the information that you provided to the homeowner in terms of what they have to do, what things they have to do to um, remove it from being a dangerous building, are those things that you would today on the other two properties that you're talking about still say they need to be done? Yes, they have lists as well. They have lists and you're saying that water shouldn't affect them doing those things. Not or, as bad as this property. Not I mean, as bad, but it's a moisture. It? It's a moisture issue, and you can correct the moisture issue. Okay. If they have water coming into the crawl space, you can put in a sump pump in a crawl space okay. to, to get rid of the water. It, some of the work will not be able to be done, but some of the work can be done. And if There's they, no reason to have this queen over top of rotted roof joists. Right. Because that's got nothing to do with the water that's eight feet. And so if they have questions on which things you think they should do and which they shouldn't do, they can contact you to discuss Absolutely. those things. And then I, I them and show yeah. them we should be able to do this. And you can this. also tell them at which points during those processes they should bring in, come and ask you, invite you in for an inspection. Would it help if they got a licensed contractor that would pull the permit rather than the homeowner? That, okay. That's usually the better process. So I can't say that we will feel the same way in March and in June about the other two issues if now that we've learned how it's gone on the first one and we give you opportunity for that one, the other two need to, in my mind, be done better in terms of making sure that all the <coughs> um, inspections occur. So is the intent to revisit 870, this one again, at the next one? Gosh, so that just seems so far out. Oh, I, I feel. Or, or January. We can go to the end of January have a special because, meeting. Yeah. I mean, it's really options. not that far out when you consider, I'm trying to be fair, Yes. winter, a ton of snow and ice, and it's really hard to do grading. The issues that they have over there, if that is the main issue, pretty hard to do over the winter. Didn't the turn, it, didn't we, was there a 90-day option or something like Only that? two that years you? to build them. Well, no. Under the statute, it says if you are going to allow the property owner to fix up the property, it should be 60 days. And if you're going to demo or order a demo, it's demo within 21 days. But if you want to continue the hearing, then you don't have to pick those options. Well, then, I like that. I, my question for the board is, so, you know, not to be flippant about this, but it took two and a half years to build a bridge that was not budgeted by Wayne County. We have a drain that's not, I assume, not budgeted by Wayne <laughs> County. Um, how long is it going to take for them to build this drain? Is the drain going to solve the issue? How long is this board comfortable having these build like a building? Wayne County can do that right away. If someone said you're going to put this drain in, and told the workers to do it, they'd do it tomorrow. Yeah, understood. It's and getting to that point. The why I want to meet, have Jade and I meet with Dev is to understand exactly what I mean, that work goes on, whether it's winter or summer. Budget or not. Yeah. It's like our guys out there in the middle of the winter replacing water lines and fixing water leaks. It, it can be done. I'm at least comfortable enough to continue it till we get that answer, yeah. or at least have that initial discussion to understand. Yeah. From your... okay, so so if you want to continue the hearing, you know, a month out or the first meeting in January, that should give time to have communication with like Wayne County. I would like to give us until your next meeting with Bev is January 8th. First I'm week of January, that, correct. You can, you can run it, let her know now that we're looking for strong responses in budget, not in budget. Is it planned for the, the drainage issue that was right. apparently I, missed? I would say that I would probably expedite the conversation before the January 8th meeting but ha try and to get a final have the conversation answer. over the course of the next couple of weeks, um, taking into consideration the holidays, but we would, uh, we would instigate that call. Therefore, I'm now into the second, third week into January before I'd like to have this hearing again. The, the first meeting in January, the second Tuesday, is January 14th. So it would be the week after a, a January 8th meeting with the county. I am still not in town that week. 28th would be the next meeting. Okay, with the board, because I don't necessarily have to be here to have this meeting. You want to do it on the 14th? Yeah, yeah. So, so be, it'll be on the 14th. So it would be appropriate to close the hearing and make a motion to continue this hearing till, you know, whichever date you decide on. January 14th. Okay. 
So that is the direction for the property owner and representation. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. So you're going to meet with the Wayne County. We're going to get expert advice on. Jade's going to start the communication immediately, and then by January 8th, have a hard answer from the county. Is it in the budget? Not in the budget. Is it a plan? What is the timing? Is there timing? Is will it solve timing? the problem? Yeah, will it solve the problem? That's a whole another level between right. our guys too and the county guys, engineering perspective. Yeah. And obviously during that time, we'll be communicating with the county and the homeowner, and I'll, I'll bring in Rob as well. We'll all sit down and, and, and look at and see what the county has to say and their engineering department has to say as well. So we all come back. We have, we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. Supervisor, I move to close the public hearing at 636. Support. Fair motion presented. State aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, now uh, let's see. I want to make a motion to continue the public hearing. Should I? Corporation, uh, Kristen, should I make a motion to continue the public hearing on that date? Yes, that would be appropriate. Date we discussed? January 14th. Yes, January 14th. Supervisor, I move to continue this uh, to, uh, public hearing on January 14th. Support. For just the one building, not the other one? Yes. Right? Okay. <coughs> Sec oh, motion and support. Those in favor of the motion is present. Please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. We now move into general calendar. Yes, we do close. Uh, close. Well, we have to have an, a motion to amend the agenda to allow us. To, no, we don't have to. So we can make a motion now to go into closed session. Mr. Supervisor, I move to go into closed session for the purposes of uh, strategy negotiations uh, for the corp. It's for the green. Us. Support. Good. Those in favor of the motion to go into closed session, say aye. We have to be of a voice count. Yes. Aye. Yes. yes. Okay, so uh, Anne Marie, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 We're in closed session.
can do it. Okay. Jeez, they were all Jeez. Cool. Supervisor, I move Sorry. for the board uh, go from closed to open session. <coughs> Those in favor of motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Okay, uh, call for a motion to adopt the agenda with one amendment. John? I'd like to make a motion to amend and accept the agenda. Amend by adding a closed session following dangerous building hearing and add item 60 to hire an attorney for pending lawsuit, Green versus Kim. The only, uh, yeah, G0, thank you, John. And uh, we, we already handled the closed session, so this is really the amendment to add G0. Was there discussion about C5? Yes to, yes, to remove C5 for further discussion. General calendar? Or? Uh, not necessarily. Just remove it completely? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I amend what... Trustees are, are stating that um, this candidate's not acceptable? Further discussion. Interesting. Okay. Would that be appropriate, John? Would you yes. accept that amendment? Accept okay. It. okay. Okay, so the, uh, the amendment is to add G0 and remove C5, which the supervisor was not aware of until we arrived here. So thank you very much. Yeah. I support that motion from John. All right, those in favor as the motion is presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. First item, uh, let's see, so we've got, uh, agenda has been approved. We've got one set of uh, minutes to be approved from November 12th, 2019 meeting. Uh, call for a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Support. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Very good. Don't we do payment of the bills next? Yep. That's our C5. C5. Um, did you ask? Call for a motion on the consent agenda from everyone. Not I yet. Oh, yet. okay. No. We I meant we on the, the on the regular agenda. You did. Yeah. Um, oh, we did yeah, on John's that. motion. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I as amended by you to drop C five. Yep. Thank you. Then where we are now is the uh, citizens' non-agenda item comments. Is this point? If there's anybody who would like to make comments, public comment. Now would be the time, Mr. Miller. President George Miller, I addressed an issue here a few weeks ago on a lift to be adapted to the fans here. Do you have some fans for uh, the block, the uh, program? Could they be adapted to a lift for senior citizens? And why can't that be done? Another thing at Briarfield and, Briarfield and Applewood, a year or two ago when they were putting in the water main, I complained a lot, complained about the 15-ton front end loader they had on the road. You know, my friendly uh, Wayne County replaced the sewer, the storm sewers, where they caved it in. We, I, we're, I like to know who was engineering that job. I asked the foreman on the job. I'm sure we can get it, and he'll verify that they were damaged. Yesterday, on Monday, I'd like to know what the noise level is on uh, the gun range. It sounded like uh, Normandy was going on over there at the gun range. From 7 o'clock, I called around 8, and it continued to about 9 or 9.30. I'd like to know what we have an ordinance on dust, sunrise to dust, basically, on noise. Evidently, it doesn't apply to that gun range. If they have to practice at night at 6 o'clock, I would think they would be done surely by 8. That would be sufficient time. Not 9 or 9.30. On and off like a big shootout. So next thing is I'd like to ask, uh, uh, 
are the ditches over on Sheldon and Palmer Road, and that's county, the guardrails falling in the ditch over there. And if somebody was to slide off the road, it wouldn't hold them, most likely. I'd like to know if that problem can be solved. Okay, thank you. Thank you, George. Is there any additional public comment? Any additional public comment? Seeing none, uh, call for motion to pay the bills. Mr. Supervisor, I make a motion that we pay the bills. Support. The motion is presented. Please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, now uh, we go into public hearing. Uh, call for a motion to go into public hearing. Supervisor, I move to open the public hearing on the adoption of the fiscal year 2020 budget. Second. Third motion is presented. State aye. 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 Motion carries. We are now in public hearing. And Wendy, would you like to lead us? Is there anything to share with the group this evening? Sir, um, the budget that is being presented and we're asking the board to adopt at this point in time uh, is what was presented at the board in October the, with the updates that we discussed in addition the additional position of the labor that was discussed uh, on two weeks ago. Um, it was also added to the budget since that point in time. Otherwise, uh, it's the same budget that we've talked about a year ago with the updates in October with the addition of the position we talked about a couple weeks ago. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Just as once approved, is the budget out on the website for the public? The, the budget will be put out on the website. We actually wait until after the 2019 amendments come before the board because we post the final amendments for the 19 with the adoption of the 20 budget as well. Those final amendments we're going to be bringing to the board on December 10th. So it should be a week after that, maybe. It'll be before the new year. It'll probably be the week before Christmas would be my guess is when it will be out on the board. Okay. But we have it available if anybody has questions on it to look at in, before that point in time. Thank you. No additional questions or comments from the board. Um, call for a motion to close the public hearing. Supervisor, I move to close the public hearing on the adoption of the fiscal year 2020 budget at 7.04. Second. So in favor of the motion is presented, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now we'll read the consent calendar as one item with oh, the exclusion of G5. There's a, as one resolution. One resolution for the oh, budget. Okay. the budget. Absolutely. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution. Whereas Act 359 of 1947, the Charter Township Act, requires that the annual budget be adopted by resolution and... Uh, sorry, whereas uh, pursuant to MCLA uh, 141.412 and point. Four, one, three. Notice of a public hearing on the proposed 2020 budget was published in a newspaper of general circulation on November 14, 2019, and a public hearing on the proposed budget was held on November 26, 2019. <coughs> now, therefore, be it resolved that estimated total revenues and expenditures for the 2020 fiscal year are hereby appropriated on a fund level basis. Totals by fund are listed below be it further resolved that the township supervisor has the authority to approve budget amendments between departments based upon recommendation by the appropriate department director and the finance and budget director in accordance with adopted policies be it further resolved that the charter township of canton uh, board of trustees adopts the 2020 budget for the various funds on a fund level basis um, Township officials responsible for the expenditures authorized in the budget may expend township funds up to, but not to exceed the total appropriation authorized for each fund. Be it further resolved, uh, there are there shall be there shall not be any new positions created that shall result in an increase in employee headcount within a department or division without prior township board approval. Be it further resolved that the township supervisor has the authority to fill existing vacant and budgeted positions and reclassified positions based upon the recommendation by the appropriate department director and finance budget director. And be it further resolved that claims against the township shall be approved by the Charter Township of Canton Board uh, prior to being paid. The township clerk and the township treasurer may authorize payment of certain claims prior to approval by the township board to avoid late penalties, service charges, and interest, for example, utilities and payroll, in accordance with approved salaries and hourly rates adopted by the township board. The township board shall receive a list of those claims paid prior to approval for approval <coughs> at the next board meeting. 
Those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, now we'll read the consent calendar as a single item, less G5, or C5. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following, the consent calendar as presented. Item C1, consider approval of the 2020 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting dates. Item C2, consider approval of the 2020 Building Board of Appeals meeting dates. Item C3, consider appointment of John R. Badeen to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Item, and item C4, consideration of second reading of an ordinance to amend chapter 50 to the, uh, to the code of ordinances entitled Parks and Recreation. Those in favor of the consent calendar as read, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, now we move into the general calendar. First item, G1. G0, thank you. And a new add-on is uh, consideration of request to hire outside counsel to represent Canton Township in the matter of Dorothy Green versus Canton Township. Mr. Supervisor, I move to authorize the firm of O'Connor, DeGrazia, Tam, and O'Connor to represent the named defendants in the matter of Green v. Canton Township to be paid for, e for equally from the police and fire fund budgets. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Item G1. Consider first reading of the amendment to Appendix A, Zoning Court of Ordinances regarding the Great Land Real Estate Rezoning. This is in the form of two motions. Mr. Supervisor, I move to introduce and hold the first reading of the proposed amendment to Appendix A, Zoning of the Code of Ordinances of the Charter Township of Canton as provided in the attached ordinance which rezones the subject parcel from Light Industrial to C2, Community Commercial District. The applicant is proposing to rezone the subject property from L1 Light Industrial to C2 Community Commercial District. The property will be combined with parcels to the north that fronts Michigan Avenue to expand the existing animal hospital. The request is consistent with mixed use designation and future land use map of the comprehensive plan. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Buller in the audience representing this evening. Uh, are there any questions or comments the board may have? Okay, seeing none, those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G2, that was a single motion. Advisor, yeah. I further move to table for consideration of the amendment of a second reading on December 10th, 2019. Those in favor of the second motion as presented, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And now uh, go. G2. Consider approval of a special land use for Canton Banquet and Convention Center. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board approve the following, adopt the following resolution. Approval of the special land use for Canton Banquet and Convention Center. Whereas the project sponsor, Canton Township, has requested special land use approval for a <coughs> banquet and convention center on property located on the east side of Lots uh, Road, south of Michigan Avenue, and whereas the Planning Commission reviewed the request in special land use criteria and voted six to zero to recommend approval as the proposal meets all the general criteria of grant for granting of said special land use. Now therefore be it resolved, the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Canton, Michigan does hereby approve the request for a banquet and convention center on the tax parcel listed subject to all applicable local and state requirements. The applicant is proposing to develop a 39,600 square foot banquet center on an 8.35 acre site at the east side of Lots Road, south of Michigan Avenue. The facility will have several banquet rooms with pre-function space, including an outdoor event plaza. The center will also include a second floor with offices and bridal suites. The Lots is paved with the direct access to Michigan Avenue. The proposed request meets all the general criteria for special land use approval. Traffic is generally off-peak and can adequately be served from lots in Michigan Avenue. The responses to the special land use criteria are attached. Uh, we have representatives here from Mannix Smith. Mr. Knighton is with us. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Anne-Marie? So basically it looks like they um, 
I mean, this is just the approval, and it does say that, you know, Chairman Green did have some questions about the masonry, but that would come later. So this is just for the special land use. But I was wondering, was a market study done at all for this? And I'm wondering what the rates would be to rent rooms like this in your facility. I ask that you come to the uh, podium, sir, and uh, if you would be so kind. Um, your name? Good evening, my name is Bill Baines, and uh, I'm the owner of this project. Uh, so can you repeat your question, please? Sure. I was wondering if a market study was done to have this type of facility here and what type of rates you would be charging. You know, the, uh, the market study was done uh, to see if there's a need for such a facility. And about the rate, it will change when, or it will be defined when we have the facility ready, because the facility might be might be two two and a half years before it's open for uh, for business, so uh, we do not have a specific per head rates. You had referred to like Laurel Manor and some of those other Burton Manors north of us. Why do you think this is needed here? Absolutely. Um, during the market study, what we what we found is there is not any facility that was recently built. Those facilities are dated. And uh, uh, I came from uh, 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 Indian heritage background, and uh, there's a lot of big weddings, and we always find a difficult to find a venue. Uh, we go to Toronto, we go to Chicago, we go out of town to find a facility that can accommodate that many people. And uh, so this will be a very uh, nice uh, upgrade I don't think there will be any other facility or there's any other existing facility like what we are planning on, on building one. And, uh, and not only um, it will cater for uh, what we are trying to, uh, trying to do, but also it will have other uh, business impact. The people will come from outside, they will spend here, they will stay here, they will eat here. So I think that it will have another economic impact um, uh, in, in our community. So. Get more appropriate venue for the Indian community as opposed to what we have here already then? Not only Indian community, but obviously we'll cater everybody, but upscale. Yeah. What does that mean? I'm sorry, larger rooms? Why larger room, up to date. Uh, we, can, uh, we can stream live weddings, especially the international, you know, the people cannot travel from, uh, from abroad. And uh, we can... Uh, uh, we, uh, we can live stream uh, the events, and uh, you know it will be state of the art, uh, good, good, good looking facility. Good people will have a good, good experience, lifetime experience. And uh, we looked at other other communities, and uh, the reason we chose Canton. I, I live in Canton. I raised three kids, and um, uh, been in Canton resident for 15 years. And I think it's a beautiful community. It's a diverse. And uh, we decided to spend, uh, spend our money, hard-earned money, in uh, the commun community that we live in. So, sure. Jeff Goulet, I, hopefully you can answer this question for us. In the resolution that we're ask, being asked to approve, it, sh it states that Canton Township is the project sponsor, and we are requesting the special land use approval. Um, page 106 in the package. Canton Township is not the project sponsor. Mr. Baines is the project sponsor. It looks like there may be a, a typo in the in the resolution that I read. Yeah, that, there might. That may have been a carryover from a resolution we did for the fire station. I would expect. So. Okay. I apologize for the typographical error. So yeah, the project sponsor is Mr. Baines. Everyone's so. comfortable with a friendly amendment to the resolution I read, so that we yeah. aren't the project sponsor. I was like, whoa. I apologize. So. Separate question. Yeah. Go ahead, Stephen. Um, Jeff, this is for you. I um, <clears throat> was looking at, there's one, I, I don't know, Jade, if you can bring it up or not, but there's one um, uh, map, uh, satellite view or something, and it shows to the east there's um, trees, and it says vacant. And I was wondering if you knew of that property. Is it in Canton, or is that moved into Westland, and how is that? property accessible the property just to the east of this is the old woolen Meadows landfill 
So this property basically is just south of the existing uh, strip center and uh, motel. And then you've got McDonald's along Michigan Avenue to the east of that. So basically, this property backs up to the toe of the landfill to the east. So the west side of Lots Road was a, a proposed site south of uh, the existing uh, Holiday Inn Express that was approved a couple of years ago for another motel. Uh, so, but yeah, just to the east of this, this is a heavily wooded site. He's going to have some uh, pretty substantial tree removal, but uh, yeah, just to the east is, is the, is the closed landfill. Okay. It says, it looks like the landfill is to the southeast, but right to the east is something vacant. So, and I don't need the answer now, but, and then to the east of that looks like some kind of road with a bunch of cars stored on it and Google maps. Right. Yeah. The property to the east goes all the way over to Hannon Road, where there's a big auto transport facility further east of, of that. Okay. So this property may touch the back end of the, of the McDonald's property. McDonald's isn't developed all the way to the south end of their property. I just didn't know what vacant meant. Like it must be owned by someone. And just one of the documents says right. it. Okay. So if you want to email us later, just take a look at it. Okay. But appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Michael? The site plan looks like on the perimeter there's a substantial amount of trees. Is that due to like the uh, tree replacement ordinance or... As part of his process, once he uh, gets through the special land use process and submits a site plan, then he'll do an evaluation of the tree cover and will evaluate in accordance with the uh, tree preservation ordinance what he has to do in terms of replacements on the site in terms of mitigation. So we're not sure exactly. You know, he is basically building out from lot line to lot line. The stormwater system will be underground, so he is making full use of the property. Yeah, just to add on what Jeff just said, we did do our uh, tree survey. So the tree survey was done by Manny Smith, so it's in place. So by building out, like you were saying, um, that means building out all concrete and asphalt, or will there be paths and woods still left there? Well, you'll see that there's a setback from the parking lot to the property line, so that'll be basically the, you know, They'll retain the trees along that buffer area. I think there's, what, 20 or 30 feet, Bill, along the property lines that'll be retained. Last week when they did the, um, the summit, the banquet area, and they were asking for community input, one thing that people said is that they wanted an outdoor, like gazebos, so that people could go out and take pictures or maybe even get married outside and have a wooded area. Are you looking at something like that, Ben? Yeah. Yes, we do. If you look at uh, the site plan that we, we have attached, it shows on uh, uh, the north side of the building. So there is the outdoor plaza that ha does have a gazebo and, uh, and patio that people can go out and uh, do those ceremonies. We'll probably maintain some of the trees in that area. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. This area. Yeah. Well. And also there's a big fountain on the front. There's a water element. People can, uh, you know, go out, have a picture taken and, uh, you know. How many parking spaces are there? Jeez. 625. Yeah, it'll accommodate over 1,100 people. <coughs> Can it, can, it, can it be subdivided? I've been told that Indian weddings are often 1,000 people. Oh, yeah. Been there. My, my <laughs> son's just got married, and we had 200, so I thought that was a big wedding, but no. <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to scare. We will accommodate 200, too. <laughs> and my daughter's you? getting married in May <laughs> or in September, so. Yeah, yeah Steve, be, be, in order be, to answer your question, oh, the vacant you. property shown on there is just the south end of the frontage property on Michigan Avenue where there's an old frontage motel on there. So this is the back end of that property. So thank you. Okay. So there would be the ability to subdivide internally. The uh, I see you've got a couple of phases as well. So can this, this building can be subdivided. Subdivided inside. into three separate halls. Correct. Okay. Cool to me. But one thing I notice about some of the ceremonies we have in town, when we run out of parking areas, like at the temples and that, we do shuttle away. Have you thought about that also? Because if you're saying 600, you know, maybe it wouldn't be enough for some of the celebrations that we see. Um, um, 
If you look at uh, a couple of letters uh, of support from the hotels next door, the Holiday Inn and, uh, uh, and uh, Super 8, I guess. And uh, we, I did talk to them, and because some of the guests might stay in their hotels, and they can, uh, they, uh, they, walk over. they can okay. walk over, and okay. uh, that's potentially available. Uh, oh. yeah. uh, all right, thanks. Hmm. Nope, good. Questions? Those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a single motion there? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. All set. Next phase. Uh, G3. Consider award of a contract to VinCon Inc. for the demolition of two dangerous buildings at 500 Marion, uh, which and 870 North Lots, which we have all agreed to um, allow 500 Marion, the 21 days, yeah. and then we will revisit on January 14th, um, 870. So, how would so we postponed 870. So I would probably read the 500 Marion. I would confirm the building uh, the confirm the order of the hearing officer that the building needs to be demolished. We had agreed to a 21 day um, uh, period for which they can make allow the property owner to allow the property owner to if they don't. So then I would probably do well, we have three resolutions or three motions. I would just uh, pull 870 out and then amend 500 to give them the 21 day grace period. Should I start? Yeah, go ahead. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board hereby uh, confirm the order of the hearing officer and approve uh, the demolition of 500 Marion uh, under, the, um, under the condition that the property owner has 21 days to do the demolition themselves. Or, sorry, just uh, the whole dangerous building ordinance states that the 21 days is in there, so we are authorizing the demolition per the ordinance. So we would not be moving forward with the demolition until that point anyway. Lovely. So I don't know that the 21 days has to be part of the resolution tonight. Okay. Because this has all followed the ordinance process to this point. So you're just approving the hearing officer's findings, um, not Lots Road, but on Marion, you're approving that. And then in the 21 days, if it's not down, we'll move in. Oh, lovely. Perfect. Okay. So I hereby confirm the order of the hearing officer and approve the demolition of 500 Marion. Those in favor of the motion is presented. Say aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Supervisor, I authorize the finance department to make the following the finance department to make the following budget amendment to record demolition expenses and revenue. Increased expense account number listed for professional services in the amount of twelve thousand five hundred and eight dollars and the increased revenue uh, to the revenue account for reimbursement miscellaneous to twelve thousand five hundred and eight dollars. Support. In favor of the second motion is presented. State aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G4. One, One more. Mr. Four. Supervisor, I further move to authorize the building official to award a contract. <coughs> award the contract? No, we don't. Yeah. Mr. Supervisor, I move to authorize the building official to award a contract to VinCon Incorporated for an amount not to exceed $23,429 if the building is still standing after 21 days. Support. Right. 508. Nope. Because we're only going to do the one building today. It's not. Well, well it's not to so exceed. Not to the, exceed. Okay. Well, we have 12,508 already in our coffers from insurance checks. So what you're going to be approving is $18,569. That's the final price of 500 Marion. You can do it either way, but we're not going to we're not going to spend the other money until. January 14th or after. Not really. Because you're covered at the 23,000. Yeah. Exceed, Anything you? they don't spend will go back into general fund anyway at the end of the year. So impressive when you come in under budget. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> For the, the motion is presented. Has been supported? Yes. Yes, me. In favor the motion is presented. Say aye. 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 Motion carries. Moving on now to item G4. Consider approval of purchase order increase with OHM advisors for construction engineering inspection 
for the Warren Road pressure reducing valve in the amount of $16,000. Supervisor, I move to increase purchase, the purchase order number listed for to OHM advisors in the amount of $16,000 for the construction, engineering, and inspection of the proposed Warren Road pressure reducing valve. Report. Currently, Public Works has an open purchase order with OHM uh, number 2018-2656 for design construction inspection of pressure reducing valve on Warren Road. Due to change in the scope of the work now going through the open bid process, an increase of 16000 is requested. An additional board request with the lowest qualified bidder recommendation will be necessary in the future. Are there any questions for Jade at this point? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion is presented. Please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Single motion. Yes. Item G5. Consider approval of modification number one of the intergovernmental agreement with Wayne County for paving of Ridge Road. Mr. Supervisor, I enthusiastically move to approve modification number one, the intergovernmental agreement with Wayne County and further uh, to authorize yourself, the supervisor, to sign the amendment on behalf of Canton Township. Okay, on January 9th, 2018, the Township Board approved an intergovernmental agreement with Wayne County for the paving of Ridge Road. The Wayne County Commission approved the agreement and it was returned to the Township on June 25th, 2018. Section 301 of the agreement had a termination date of September 30th, 2019. Modification number one extends the termination date to September 30th, 2021, uh, to ensure that the funding is still in place. Are there any questions? This is more or less a technical pushing out of a date on an agreement. Okay. Any targets? I'm sorry? Any targets for starting or finishing this work on Ridge Road? Oh, oh yeah, it's in the design process and this will be a 2020 project. This 2020. was just a housekeeping issue that we caught. The IGA had an expiration date that was a little too aggressive. When I saw it went to September 2021, I was wondering if it was getting pushed again. No, so, we, okay. we built in that okay. buffer just to make sure. So after tonight, it'll go back to the county for approval. Further comments or discussion? Those in favor of the motion is presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G6, consider approval of two-year intergovernmental agreement between Wayne County, Canton Township for the improvements of Preservation Park. Good night, Jeff. Thank you. If you're taking off. Mr. Supervisor, I move to authorize the, the supervisor to sign the intergovernmental agreement between Wayne County and Canton Township for improvements to Preservation Park. Report. Wayne County has agreed to allocate two years, allocate two years of funding for improvements to Preservation Park to construct a pavilion with permanent restrooms through the Wayne County Parks Millage in the amount of $254,476 for fiscal years 2018, 19, and 2019, 2020. An intergovernmental agreement between Wayne County and Canton has been drafted for approval by both government authorities as attached. Are there any questions or comments for Director Ollenberger? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion is presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G7. Consider approval of contract and purchase order for Village Theater Auditorium Seat Refurbishment. it was not formatted correctly. Mr. Supervisor, I move to award a contract and approve a purchase order in the amount of $146,028 for CY Young Industries Incorporated at 12510 Santa Fe Trail Drive in Lenexa, Kansas, 66215 to provide Village Theater Auditorium seat refurbishment. The funds are to be taken from the 2020 CIP funding account number listed. Now support. Okay, and in brief, the seats are starting to get worn and need to be refurbished, and that's what we're asking you to do this evening. Are there any questions or comments for Director Ollenberger? Go ahead. Are we looking at having people sponsor those seats? I know we had talked about that before. Is that going to be... Yes, early next year we're going to start a uh, seat sponsor campaign just like we had originally when the um, 
Village Theater opened. So we'll do a similar campaign, initially targeting those that had sponsored the seats the first time around. And we'll also do a permanent recognition in the lobby of those that were original seat sponsors. So the goal is to completely offset these costs with um, seat sponsor revenue. Whatever we authorize, whatever we get back from seat sponsors, we, we just put that back into the... Correct. So does that go through the partnership and then they reimburse us or it's directly... No, that's through? directly through the township. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see if I have that in front of me. I think I, we paid 600 the first time, Diane. Yeah. 600 for renewing donors, 840 for new donors. We won't take partial donations. It has to be a whole seat then. <laughs> that's, that's our goal. 600 for renewing, 840 for new. How long do the seats yep. generally last? Uh, 10 plus years. So the, the structure of the seat is still good. The, the wood, the, they're still solid. It just needs new fabric and refinishing of the wood. And then we're gonna uh, redo the plaques as well. We're hopeful that we could find an artist to actually take those old plaques and incorporate them into a permanent art piece that would have some of the names and everything in the lobby. But then we'll also do uh, one of the glass boards that you see where the names are etched in there. So we'll do that for the original seat sponsors as well. And when you deliver the old seat to my house? Yeah. <laughs> Is that next summer? In the mail. The fabric? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll send you the fabric. The fabric. Oh, you're keeping the wood. I see. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the, but, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So they're actually going to remove all Never the seats, mind. ship them down to Kansas, refurbish them there, and return them. Will there be a closing time, uh, amount of time the theater's closed? Yeah, it's a, we already have the time picked with them. It's built into our show okay, schedule, going. so we found a, a two-week period where we don't have any shows going on that we can... There'll be a bring-your-own-seat party those two weeks. Further comments or questions? Those in favor of the motion is present, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G8, consider approval of purchase order for design of Heritage Park Playground Improvement. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve a purchase order in the amount of $13,791 for MCSA Group Incorporated at 529 Greenwood Avenue, Southeast, Southeast East Grand Rapids, Michigan 48506 to design resurfacing to design resurfacing and new inclusive we go round play structure at the Heritage Park North Pavilion. The funds are to be taken from the account number for CDBG ADA improvements. Support. And in brief, what this does is it allows us to build a merry-go-round merry design for its wheelchair accessible. Okay. Are there any comments, questions for Director Holmberger? Yeah, please. So this one is for um, kids with wheelchairs. Now, why do we choose only this park for that? This actually, this improvement is actually a, an item that we specifically chose because it's considered universally accessible. So it does allow for a wheelchair to go on there, but it's not specific for individuals with wheelchairs only. It has benches. It's it's in, intended to incorporate anybody of any ability in there so we specifically chose heritage park north playground because that's where we have um, traditionally put all of our accessible equipment and our goal is to convert this park to a fully universal access park instead of just um, ada accessible ada accessible allows you to get somebody in a wheelchair to the park or to the amenity universal accessibility allows them to actually get up on and utilize all the equipment there. So this, this project would also um, include replacing all of the surfacing out there. Some of the surfacing is the poured in place kind of rubber playground and some of it is wood chips. So all of that would go to being poured in place. The poured in place there is also old and after a number of years that surfacing actually gets more rigid. So it loses its um, fall protection, so it's past its useful life there, so we need to replace all of that as well. 
Have we ever considered if, if there was a child who was in a wheelchair looking at the parks near them? Have we ever done that, looking at parks near them and putting something like this in? Yeah, we, we do such a, for Copper Park, we're, we're including ADA accessible pathways because um, the, there's gonna be a lot of wood chips there, but we are gonna have um, poured in place, rubberized playground surfacing to be able to get to all the equipment. So all of our equipment is ADA accessible but we're trying to, with this particular playground, go above and beyond and make it universally accessible. If family were to come in and make a request, we would look at it then. Correct. Right, not the HOAs. Right. Right. Good. And, and as a side note there, we also have the ADA committee um, that we've been working with on the ADA um, improvements for the township, the ADA transition plan. We did involve that committee by giving them an opportunity to come out and visit on site with us at this playground. We had a few members of the committee that d did take us up on that and came out and gave suggestions and input for this project as well. No further comments or questions. Those in favor of the motion is presented. Please say aye. 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 Item G9, consider approval of purchase order for Heritage Park ball field fence design and installation. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve a 2020 purchase order in the amount of $58,200 from the account number listed for capital outlay buildings and improvements for Michigan fence outlet at 46705 Herb Drive, Macomb, Michigan, 48042 to modify existing Heritage Park ball fields. Director Hohenberger, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but all this, what we're doing here is putting this on the fourth field. We've done three and we're gonna do a fourth or? That is wrong. So okay, this then, is. Then let me take a moment here and then back up. And that's good, that's why I'm asking the question. That's, I appreciate the response. So let's go through the background information. In addition to uh, the construction of the new ball field, Canton Leisure Services planned to increase safety to the already existing ball fields by adding the safety net. However, while negotiating with Michigan Fence for the new ball field, it was recommended that instead of adding netting to the existing fields, it can't add higher and wider backstops. There's the answer I was looking for. If I would have read it, I would have known that. And they're being implemented on the new ball field. Uh, Canton Leisure Services already has a budget of 60,000 in the 2020 Community Improvement Fund to add safety netting to the existing fields. Michigan Fence provided a proposal, which is attached here, uh, the, with, that was the same initial cost to add the backdrops in lieu of the safety netting. Backstops not only provide the safety for the patrons, but also have a longer life expectancy than the netting, as well as no annual maintenance. So this is the... Correct. So the backstops currently are kind of far back and they're just straight up, so they'll be moved in closer and higher with an overhang, so it'll prevent those fall ball, foul balls from going into the seating area. Coming back to me now. I appreciate that. Any board questions or comments? Okay, seeing, oh, go ahead, Michael. Is there a um, issue with foul balls going into the seating area currently? Absolutely, yes. Oh. And with adding a fourth field, it will be even worse out there. So that's why we planned on the safety netting, um, but this is a, a better longer term option for us. The parent in one of those games, Screaming heads is happens a lot. Heads, well, these balls, yeah. <laughs> Questions, those in favor of the motion is presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G10, consider approval of contract of two purchase orders for Canton Sports Center bathroom remodel and ADA improvements. Form of two motions, Mr. Supervisor. I move to award the contract to Meridian Contracting Group, LLC, at 6149 Trailside, Washington, Michigan, 48094 for the CSC restroom and ADA improvements. Okay, and as stated in the motion, this allows us to uh, spiff up our Canton Sports Center restrooms and bring them up to ADA, all, bring in all the necessary ADA improvements. Any questions or comments for Director Olenberger? Projects tonight. Mm -hmm. Sorry? This, they're good projects. Yeah. This is the CIP, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
those that don't know at home, we are aggressively addressing our capital improvements over the next couple of years. Our ADA transition plan has been folded into that. Favor the first motion as presented. Please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Second motion. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve a 2019 and 2020 purchase order to Meridian Contracting Group LLC at 6149 Trailside in Washington, Michigan, 48094, for the following ADA restroom remodel project at the Canton Sports Center. The funding uh, for the total amount of the project, $89,856, is recommended as follows. 2019 purchase order is of $46,000 from the account number listed for capital outlay buildings and improvements and 2000 and, or a 2020 purchase order um, of for $35,200 from, uh, from the capital improvement plan and $8,656 from the other capital improvement plan account. Those in favor of the second motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G11, consider Bid award for ADA improvements at Township Administration Building and the Summit on the Park. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board award the bid for the ADA improvements at the Township Administration Building and the Summit on the Park to Urban's Partition and Remodeling Company at 19430 Gerald, Northville, Michigan, 48167, an amount of $112,000 to be paid from the account number listed for ADA improvements. Board bid of the ADA improvements at the administration building um, as requested. Um, are there any questions for uh, Director Olenberg? Go ahead. Why do you think there's only one bidder on this one and the others we had of several? Uh, this often happens with our CDBG projects because of the Davis-Bacon requirements for pay. So for example, the um, Copper Park bid went out for design or for construction and we had no bidders on that one. And from all the contractors that we spoke with that um, were interested, they said that was an obstacle for, for them. They, they just get delayed payments then, and that's what they didn't want to deal with? No, it's because they have to have, there's more requirements on them, and maybe Director Trumbull Reporting. can speak to that better, but there's more requirements on how much they have to pay and what they have to report as well. Yeah, there, there's different documentation standards with the CDBG and the administrative work that's behind the scenes. A lot of companies, not that they're not paying the fair wage rate, but they don't want to have to do all the bookkeeping works to qualify for the grant dollars. So there's, you know, they have to pay a minimum wage. They have to have their time cards, um, certain certification on their time cards to make sure they're actually paying the appropriate rates, that they're working the hours that they say they're working. It's, it's a lot of administrative work that a lot of companies don't actually want to do, the, have the burden of doing that work. When the company was okay with doing that than Urban. When the economy is good, we have more trouble getting the CDB proje CDBG projects bid on. When the economy was bad several years ago, <laughs> That wasn't as much of an obstacle for us. Comments or questions? Those in favor of the motion is presented. Please say aye. 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 Motion carries. That concludes our formal agenda for the evening. Um, is there any additional staff comment? Any additional staff comment? Seeing none. Any additional public comment? Pre lighting next week. Oh, turkey trot, too. Address and uh, limit comments to three minutes, please. Absolutely. I'll be much quicker than that. My name is John Bedeen, 7568 Corbett Drive in Canton, also known as item C3 on tonight's agenda. And I thank you all for this opportunity to serve. Thank you. Students? Okay. Would, do you need something signed for this evening? Or? You're all set? Okay. You did a good job. You stayed through it all. It was a long <laughs> meeting. Well done. Well done. Okay, good job. Are there any additional board comments? Yes. Yeah, so we have the turkey trot. Hope to see all of us there at the turkey trot. And that's uh, 7 a.m., right? 7 a.m. And happy Thanksgiving. Well, I'll be there at 7 a.m. No, you won't be there. 9 a.m. <laughs> yeah. 9 a.m. is the start time. Oh, the start time. But don't they have the early, I mean, that's the race, right? Before Correct. that, we have the walk. The walk starts at 9 uh, and then the race. That's all tied together. And they'll have, the, generally, they do a little thing with the kids in the back. Yeah. Prior yeah. That's 9, and then the run is 9.30. Yeah, 9.30 is firing in the gun to go. And I usually did the kids in the back this time, but so we're all going to be there, right? And you're going to bring your baby, Michael? 
or Jack's going to bring you? Perhaps. <laughs> I wanted to congratulate the Village Theater, Leisure Services, and the Canton Commission for Culture, Arts, and Heritage on a fantastic international festival last Saturday. Brought my nephew Jameson there. He uh, saw the flyer. He was shadowing me on election day, and he saw the flyer for the event and decided he wanted to come to it. I, oh. So he went, and it was great. Lovely. Well done. Yeah, yeah. No That'd problem. Great. We could do that. <clears throat> All right. Seeing no further comments, go ahead. Lighting. Miss Relighting. Yes. Relighting is December 4th, next Wednesday. That's correct. At dark. Yes. Is that fair? Six o'clock. When Santa arrives. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, uh, call for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Mm -hmm. Second. Those in favor of the motion is presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Get a picture and we go.